So recording has started. Welcome to Seaboard Working Group interim meeting number 15 of 2020. Um, so I posted the, so this is an ITF meeting, so the ITF note well applies. I posted the code DMD for the minute taking and for the attendee list, which I should have filled. Um, the agenda for today was a work, working group document status uh, update. So uh, Jim of the work, uh, the, the changes to Cibor base at the top of the agenda. I think I had the ISG review comments at the bottom, but I think we can take that first then and go through, see what's, what's left to do. Um, then, Kasten, if you have a, an update on, on the tag void document. And then mm -hmm. we can talk, oh, just for information, if you haven't seen the Seaboard date tag document, is, it has passed telechat and ISG and is in RSC editor queue. So great. Good job. And then yes, we can. Congratulations to Mike and. Yes. So, um, and yeah, and then we also have two adoption calls that ended, I believe, yesterday or today. Um, and we'll take this later then. So, yeah, let's start with the Seaboard BIS document. Yeah, so Paul and I are happily generating uh, and, and acting on pull requests. So. Uh, you really should be following what's going on in in GitHub right now. We, are, we don't think we touched anything contentious yet, uh, but uh, please do follow what what's going on uh, there. Um, and uh, right now we are trying to to uh, address the uh, discusses. Most of the discusses were about uh, uh, our use of C language or pseudocode. So this was addressed in pull request 208. And there are two items left in the discusses. Um, which were the tag 35 thing that, that uh, uh, I talked about in the uh, email. And then there is some, some bad text, uh, for example, that uh, I think we can uh, simply uh, fix. So I think the only thing that, that really needs to be discussed at this point is the tag 35 issue. And it uh, uh, seems we don't have a get out of jail card here. We, we need to address this in, in some way. And um, yeah, my, my May was an attempt to uh, talk about the, the um, potential approaches we, we have. Maybe there's another approach. I'd, I'd like to hear about that. Uh, but we take 35 and, and also take 36 that we have had some discussion about recently uh, were two things that, that uh, seemed like a good idea at the time, uh, but that that's, uh, really haven't been used as much uh, as we thought they, they would be. Um, so what one um, proposal was to get rid of it, but uh, uh, getting rid of it uh, means that uh, we we suddenly have this often registration, and uh, uh, we we have to find a way to to keep this registration alive without keeping seventy forty nine alive, which is the place where uh, that thing is defined. Now, one way that I didn't write up that we could do this is to use the notable tags document as the future uh, reference uh, to that. So we could put some text into the notable tags document, also maybe documenting the limitations and operability uh, this has. Uh, or we could uh, uh, keep it in 7049 bis, but then we will have to find the right Weasel words uh, to to handle it. Let's 
So what would be your preference, Carsten? Actually, the, the, my preference would be that we somehow get it out of the way. <laughs> Uh, because I mean, it's a registered tag. It's, it's not going away, um, and we just need to to put in the right words to to shape the expectations. And um, so, even if we delete it, then we still need some some uh, 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 language that explains why we deleted it and where it is uh, described now. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have a preference. I really wish someone had uh, fixed this regular expression problem 10 years ago, so, <laughs> so you wouldn't run into it everywhere we touch regular expressions. Yeah. Um, in the mail, you said that, where was it? like something about removing, deleting tag 34 and have it referenced in obsolete document. Yeah, that, that's uh, a bad outcome, I think. Hmm. So you do have some, some preference anyway, like <laughs> some... Um, oh. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want this little problem to to have uh, um, uh, some some consequences that are much worse than than the problem itself, and not obsoleting 7049, or, or keeping it around as a way to to no uh, no that's not the option that I was talking about. Yeah. I meant um, yeah, not 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 obsoleting RC7049, but rather having the tag referencing an obsoleting. Uh, an obsoleted RC. Yeah, I'm not sure if that creates any cognitive dissonance. I, I think we can do that. It's just a bit weird. No, I agree with that. I'm just thinking of what's the <laughs> what's the best way forward. Anybody has any preference or suggestion? Jim Michael. I don't know that I like the idea of moving it from an RFC to a, a draft for the reference. I think I'd rather leave it pointed to the obsoleted RFC personally. So how strongly do they feel that we have to have a usable reference for this? That's a good question. Well, I understood from the email that one of your thoughts, Karsten, was that um, people using this tag uh, should, if they need to go beyond um, some common subset, then they should be more clear. And um, it wasn't clear to me that that was really possible for the even the, the because the users of this tag, the protocol that uses this tag may be, may not know what their users are going to use, want to write down into that thing. Or the protocol may be married to ECMA 262, and so it's clear from the protocol that all the regular expressions are ECMA 262, and well, it just uses that. That number to yeah. for that. Yeah, they could just say that. That's, that's reason. It's, it's more the case of the subset. Can I say, well, it's the common subset, and the answer may be, well, I don't know what my users are going to do. But I agree. If someone says wants to pick one or the other, then they do that. Um, and I replied and said, what if you make a copy of the of the web page or point at archive.org of it as a stable reference for PCRE? Like it just seems like otherwise we're we're risking tag forty five becoming useless and having two more tags later on. So Michael, can you repeat your what you just said? Um, what's your preferred outcome or your proposal? I don't know if there's benefit from 
I'm sorry, I don't know the ECMA reference very well. I know PCRE quite well. I, I am a little bit shocked to realize how poorly specified it is. Um, and I kind of like, oh, okay. Um, so um, I don't think we can specify this. I, I don't think that our, 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 our BIS can specify the common subset easily. Um, it, it can specify the ECMA spec. And maybe that's the right answer. Um, um, or if it needs to specify the PCRE spec, we could make a copy of this web page so that it can't change again or point to it through via archive.org or something. But I think we should be, I think I agree that we need to be a little bit more with the reviewers. I think we need to be a little bit more specific. Um, I just don't know what which specific to be. Yeah, it gets worse by the fact that ECMA 262 is changing all the time as well. Um, so 7049 was pointing to um, ECMA script version five from 2011. I don't even know what what uh, regex uh, uh, subset is in there. It's ne definitely a much was then later included in ECMAScript 2015, which is again smaller than the one in 2018, uh, which is almost good enough that you could stop using the reference to PCRE and say, just do an ECMAScript 2018 and, and you will be fine. So but each one of the scripts are, getting, are, are throwing things out? No, they're adding things. Oh, they're adding things from PCRE. Yes. I would just go for that 2018 one and say, if it's not good enough, then do your own thing. I don't know what's in it, but what you're saying is it's getting closer and closer to PCRE and it's never contradicting it, is it? I haven't checked that. <laughs> I think that, that's a major effort. Uh, okay. But it, it, I mean, all these are Perl derived um, regex syntaxes. And of right. course, Perl has been changing all the time as well. So there is actually a third column uh, here, which is Perl 5.8 versus Perl 5.10. And uh, I think the, the uh, ECMAScript people have just tried to make uh, ECMA uh, regular expressions more useful. Now, there's one, one little twist here, uh, which is that ECMA regular expressions are only really useful if you set the Unicode flag. Uh, but uh, there is no way to set the Unicode flag with 1035. Because of the lack of the flags at the end of the thing. Yes. So we would have to say it's either on or off. Well, we could say it's 2018 and it's on. and, and uh, uh, But uh, yeah, it, it's a change. Uh, so uh, do we want to make this change? I've never encoded, I've never used tag 45. I have no idea when I would use tag 45. Um, so I don't really know, care if there's a change, but I, I would prefer that the document, you know, got got approved without hassle. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> so, so anything that makes that happen makes me happy, but I don't know, it, it could be that, it could be that the, the set of people that, that this really affects is, is, is is empty and just specifying something will make people happy or I could be wrong. I have no idea. Yeah, my, my personal opinion is kind of the same that um, um, between your options, Kasten probably three keep tag 35 and make the references informative. Um, I, I, I don't think that, like, I think that if there was a problem with tag, tag 35, <clears throat> people would have uh, come forward with it now, people who have been using it, or there is no one using it. So, um, 
So how, how about saying uh, this? Um, tag 35 was registered in the predecessor uh, of, of 7049 uh, bit and was uh, referencing, <laughs> <coughs> referencing <coughs> documents that were relevant at the time. Uh, the state of the art of uh, regular expressions has advanced and um, uh, probably will advance uh, further. Uh, so it is probably a, a better idea to define specific uh, tags uh, for applications that actually need such a tag than use the, the tag 35. Does that in practice uh, recommend not to use tag 35? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine with that. I think it's, it's good. It gives uh, the references anyway um, for tag 35. Tag 35 can the registry um, in the IANA registry can still reference the, this document. And it gives some more guidance on be careful if you use it basically. Okay, so I'll try to, to write this up and we can then look at the pull requests whether we like it. Great, thank you. So this is the, what we need to do at the discuss level. Um, one other item that, that uh, came up uh, independent of the ISG discussion was this uh, 5 FFF, 7 FFF uh, discussion, which I think we have to resolve in some form, even if it hasn't made the attention of the ISG uh, yet. And uh, if, if there is a sense of the room for, for that, uh, I would be interested. So could you just summarize the discussion? Well, the, the Tiago just sent a, uh, an, an email to my uh, 11.30 world time uh, email. Um, so, yeah, I think he, he's still arguing for, for adding B and T uh, to the, the uh, syntax. So uh, basically the, the syntax uh, open parenthesis underscore a bunch of, of either byte strings or text strings, uh, closing parenthesis, that's the syntax for indefinite length uh, strings. And um, th that's great as long as you have something in there, uh, but for the empty string, the notation is ambiguous because if you just say open parenthesis underscore closing parenthesis, you never said, said whether this is a byte string or a text string. So that, that was the observation. And I made the observation that we already have uh, single quote, single quote, underscore, and double, quote, double quote, underscore as notations for exactly these special cases. And we might just start using that. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there are some people who, who would like to modify the syntax for uh, parenthesis underscore and uh, allow some indication on, on whether this is a byte or a text uh, string there, for instance, by adding a B or a T. And I'm a little bit averse to that change. I'd, I'd rather keep things compatible as long as you don't hit the, the one case that, that we don't cover properly at the moment. My personal opinion is we should just shove this off to a new document. Okay. Well, we will have to write a document for, for that payload anyway. Um, so, uh, Addressing the, the 
uh, single quote, single quote, underscore, and double quote, double quote, underscore there as well uh, would, would be fine with me. Um, yeah, until maybe somebody in the ISG notices that, that parenthesis, underscore, parenthesis is, is ambiguous. It would have been good to have Tiago in this meeting today. Yes, yes, I pointed him to that, and he actually seems to be active because he sent a message five minutes ago. Okay. Um, I think, um, I don't know, I think we we can continue the discussion in the main list. I'm okay with Jim's proposal if um, to, to put this in another document. Um, but yeah, I let's see. I think we need to continue this discussion. I can also send an email to Tiago to see if he can quickly connect while we move on. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. So, is there any other discuss comment that uh, we need to talk about today, or the rest of the ben Ben's comment were um, addressing this two o eight pull request? Well, there there are lots of comments from Ben, and and some are very good. And um, um, so, for instance, that that he commented that we don't say when we convert JSON to a CBOR what the rounding mechanism for the floating point numbers is. And I mean, yeah, obviously. And um, there is also an obvious answer. We do it the same way JavaScript does it. Uh, and uh, so this this is a technical clarification from my point of view, and th th there are half a dozen of those. And, and uh, we are right now writing these up and generating pull requests, but it does take some time. Um, so that will keep us busy for another couple of days. But I don't think anything contentious will, will come up in, in that part. It's just filling in some, some T bars and, and I dots. Do we need to say anything about the issue that Lawrence brought up on MIME? Well, we could add similar language to, actually, we already have similar language. Let me check that to the tag 36. Um, so the, the text for tag 36 already says that in many cases this tag is not useful, so you can use tag number 257. But I'm not sure what we actually would change in this text. I'm happy with things the way they are. It's just you didn't reply to the mail, so. I wanted to double check. Yeah, okay. I, I replied to that mail. Oh, I missed it. I, I have still have to. I didn't do that yet. Ah, okay. <clears throat> okay, I sent the email to Tiago. Let's see if he joins. Uh, otherwise, I think we can move on. Next topic on the agenda. And in case, come back. So. What was it? Update on the OID tags.net. Yeah, not, nothing particularly happened there because we are focusing on 749 this. Okay, yeah. 
just to check. This was uh, left over from last interim. Yeah. yeah. And it will be left over to the next interim. Yeah. That's good. And the uh, uh, shown is not there anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then next on the agenda was uh, adoption calls. So um, we had support during last interim and we had a couple of people uh, supporting um, in the mailing list as well. Uh, as Jean said, it's quite low traffic, but uh, no one came forward to, to um, object or strongly object. So considering that this mailing list and this, the participation in the interim is in general low traffic, I would say that there is a consensus on uh, adopting these two documents. So yeah. when, I, when I move an adoption call from a, a meeting to the mailing list, I do it slightly different, or I did it slightly different. I'm not a working group chair anymore. Um, so I said that uh, we had uh, consensus in the room and we want to confirm this on the mailing list. So uh, that, that yeah. is a little bit. Uh, I, I have done that previously as well. I actually inspired myself from, from your emails, Karsten. So. But for this one, I um, I didn't call it consent. Room. Yeah. So to me, it was support for adopting the draft. Yeah. Uh, but I was looking mostly for objections, uh, and there was no one objecting. So to okay. me, this sounds like the, the documents are adopted. Jim, uh, please say if you don't think so. Um. I think we're fine adopting them. Okay, so please submit with the ITF Tibor. Yep. Great. Um, any, I thought there was more things on the agenda, but seems like we're getting to the end. So, um, any other business? Karsten? I yes. sent you a mail that you did not reply to about do we need to broaden our call on how people want, think they want to use libraries into like core and suit. Or not libraries, dictionaries. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that, that I need to pick up. So I um, I need to write up my, my proposal how to do this. And Brendan had, I think it was Brendan, had some some brilliant way of doing it as well. Um, so the, I, I want to finish them before this at the moment, and I, I have limited time, and I want to invest every, everything I have into that. So that will probably only come after 7049 is approved. So I'm I'm, I'm diagnosing the state of the suit working group as they couldn't really wait for us to finish packing anyway. So we, 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 we are not in a particular rush for finishing packing. Of course, we, we don't want to wait another seven years uh, with that. Um, so yeah, I think doing 7049 is first is the right thing to do. Oh, I agree with that. But I think we're basically, uh, Coral is blocked on getting this done. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so let's try to get something discussable worthy before the end of the month. Is this something we want to add to future agenda? Yes. Um, so not next one, but one after that, or? Well, I hope. I hope the next one. Oh, okay. I hope that seventy forty nine business approved when we meet the next time. Yes, and it will be. It will be a positive thing. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, for next meeting's agenda, then we have, uh, let, let's keep the OID tag document in there. Um, 
this new proposal for dictionaries. Uh, anything else that we want to add? Well, I mean, obviously, if we're not done with the 7049 bis, we will continue that as well. Anything else that we want to add? Yeah, I wish I could propose notable tags, but th that's uh, too optimistic. That will really need to wait for another term. Okay. Okay. Um, ah, one other issue. We need to schedule that. Yes. We need to do a schedule request for a working group meeting. Yes. For the upcoming IETF meeting. Do people that's have right. opinions on whether we should do for 60 minutes or 120 minutes? Sixty. Yep, I agree. We have the inference. So. Yeah, sixty sounds good. And and if you have any any additional um, um, conflict that is added from last time. Please let us know so we can add that. Well, I hope we will have an ASDF working group and a JSON path working group and many nice shiny new working groups. Do you think JSON path is really going to get pushed through before them before a gin dispatch meeting? You mean the dispatch meeting? Right, um, the dispatch meeting. I don't know. Okay, but we will add it anyway. But you might get, you might be able to get a boss boss out of it anyway. But then I would have had to register this boss. Oh, that's true. Sometime now, today, right? Um, I think it's this Friday. Oh, this, this Friday, Friday, I think yes. Which you might want to do, and then delete it. Well, add it to the list. If it doesn't show up, then it's not a conflict, right? Yes, I, I will do that. Okay, and we have until we have two weeks to to request, so that should be fine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Noted. And of course, if you get any other. Uh, conflict that you would like to add to the conflict list, let us know before uh, deadline. Anything else? If not, I think we can close the meeting. Thank you for calling in. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.